Welcome back to another episode of High Output Juice. Yes, that is how it's pronounced. It's not that sort of channel. Here we only take a look at tool porn, and today we are going to look at the Malarkey M12 spot blower. And in this series, what I do is I monitor battery voltage and the current being provided by batteries to the tool under operation. Current multiplied by voltage gives us power in watts. And by doing so, we can run a variety of tests that uh, determine, well, what the electrical characteristics of an operating tool are like. For instance, today we are going to do three different tests. The first one is to look at a variety of batteries and see how they operate in the tool. Do these hose blow harder, for instance? Here's an XC 5.0 and here's a 2.5. How do they compare to the compact batteries? I've got a CP3, a CP2, and an older CP2. This one's about halfway through its work in life. Here's an XC 4.0. So that's going to be the first series of tests. The second test that I'd like to conduct is to take a look at the extension. Does the extension modify power usage by the tool? Does it modify output? of the tool. Uh, does this cost anything in use? And then the third test to run is to just take a look at this smallest capacity battery, this 2.0, kind of run or dry, and what we're going to see is how does it perform over time? Does the performance constantly decline over time, or is it nice and flat and then just suddenly drops off? Anyway, let the tests begin. For the first set of tests, let's evaluate different batteries. I have wind speed in miles per hour here. It's located about two inches in front of the schnozzle. I've got volts here and we got current there. And we're going to begin our test with the older 2.0 CP battery. And I'll plug it in. And uh, what we will do is we're going to measure it at five seconds and then at 60 seconds. High speed, of course, speed level number two. A newer 2.0 battery. A 3.0 battery. And the moment we've been waiting for, the high output 2.5. XC 4.0. And the second moment we've been waiting for, the high output XC 5.0. New test. Let's see how she blows with a longer schnozzle. I got the high output 5.0 recharged, installed, and ready to go. And for the last test, I have an older CP 2.0 battery installed. And let's let the blower suck it dry.
and the results are in. Let's start with voltage, initial voltage. All of the batteries except this one charged above 12 volts and are in good condition. The batteries that accept the, the highest voltage are my newest batteries. This it would be the XC 5.0 high output and the CP 2.0. However, really the difference in voltages is, is it's a little bit of randomness, just how long the battery's been off of the charger really. Now this battery, I like to throw it into the mix because it represents a typical battery that you might have. Uh, this is about five years old and it, it's, it's, I figure about halfway through its working life. In my other video on high output juice regarding the Rover floodlight, I actually uh, determined that its uh, capacity is not 2.0 amp hours, but it's closer to one and a half amp hours. Uh, you might notice I put a little mark on this battery. <laughs> this mark is simply for when I'm recording these videos, so I know which battery is which. I do make a slightly more permanent mark on my batteries as they get older and they get upgraded and replaced. And the way I do that is I put a little pip on the battery. I put that on with a soldering iron, just melt a little tiny divot in there. And that way I can tell an older battery from a newer battery. And if I was to get yet another 2.0 battery, uh, this one would get a second pip and this one would get a pip and my newest battery wouldn't have any pip on it. Now let's turn our attention to power provisioning. The battery that provided the most power to the blower was this XC 5.0 high output. This provided about 200 watts of power at the beginning and that declined about 5% a minute in. The worst performing battery is unsurprisingly this older one. That provided 130 watts at the beginning and it declined once again by about 5% a minute in. What is surprising is that there isn't a huge difference in the power output between these batteries, particularly between these high outputs versus the next best regular battery. And in that both cases, uh, the difference in power provision was well under 10%. This difference is even more stark when we looked at airflow. Airflow varied from 69 miles per hour to about 57 miles per hour. That's a difference of 21%. However, when we were comparing uh, the high output versus the normal batteries, in both cases, the difference was only a 4% improvement in airflow. In the second test, we aimed to find out whether there was any impact on the performance of this tool when the schnozzle extension is engaged. And what we found is that there was no significant effect either in power consumption or in airflow and output by this blower. What that means is that Milwaukee's engineers did a very good job of not restricting the pathway for airflow when this extension is in place. You might think that restricting airflow would increase the amount of power consumed by the blower motor. Uh, it certainly sounds that way when I block the airflow with my hand. It sounds like the motor's struggling. But you think about it for a second. What is the motor consuming power to do? It's to move air. And you block the movement of air, then less power is going to be needed by the motor. For the third test, we voyeuristically watched this blower suck this little battery dry. And what we found is that the power provision by this battery, the tool, declined in the first minute, but thereafter, power provision was relatively stable for the next four minutes. It only declined in the last two minutes, and precipitously so in the last minute of operation. However, what was really interesting is that the air speed of this tool did not decline nearly as much as the power provision. Take a look at the line for miles per hour, compare it to the line for uh, power and watts, and it's a lot flatter. That was really interesting. It had me stumped. I had to go to the internet and I had to do some research. And what I found is the third law of fans. Believe it or not, there are fan laws and there's at least three of them. What the third law states is that for every increase in performance in error flow, you need a cubic increase in power being delivered to the fan motor. 
Uh, what that means is that airflow is, is comparatively insensitive to battery condition in, in its charge cycle. You might have noticed that with the earlier graphs comparing batteries as well, uh, that the amount of airflow did not change very much compared to the amount of battery power provisioning. That was a pretty cool finding. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Uh, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.